come to address the shenanigans in the name of liaison in the so-called cis geopolitical zone. I want to make it very categorically clear that Biafra do not recognize anything geopolitical zone within the Nigeria state. As a matter of fact, the so-called geopolitical zone is a fraud. It was done without the consent of the people. The same thing that was done in 1914, amalgamation, without the consent of the people. The same way the demography has been changed, distortion of map, by creating state without the consent of the people. So you can't begin to operate a fraud for a foundation and at this time that Bia France has taken their future into their own hand. You are again imposing things and sending some nonsensical representative or whatever lies in to be for land. I have come this evening to inform Nigeria state and the drug lord that nobody, nobody, I mean nobody in the name of a liaison representative from Nigeria government will be allowed to stay even one night in the entire South, South and Southeast, which is Biafra territory. That particular office under Nigeria is banned from tonight, even without arrival. If we found anybody in the name of Nigeria Liazen within the Biafra territory, you are going to be met with fire. It is a promise. We are at the verge of our freedom by all means because what we are fighting for is a fight for survival we are facing extinction we are facing annihilation from the nigeria terrorist state and at this point it's an insult for somebody who call himself a president after having marginalized the biafra people disenfranchise us, mock us, to come and say you are sending a liaison in our land. Believe me, I want to inform them today that this is not Wazriki, neither this is Mazin Ambikano. This is the Biafra government in exile, and the Biafra government in exile is completely in charge of the Biafra territory. And so, as we are getting closer to our declaration, it is the responsibility of this government to continue to delegitimize Nigeria by making sure we do not allow any further invasion in the name of Liazen or uh, regional government. Because what they are trying to do now is because they have seen the light of Biafra shining all over the eastern region. And they are now very desperate, thinking that they can give offices, create all these nonsense offices, copying Biafra government uh, uh, template in order to distort what we're doing. I want to inform them this evening that we have gone too far. We have gone too far that no amount of distraction will derail this movement, will derail the liberation, will derail the declaration of Biafra on the 2nd of December. All these things you see they are doing today is because they have seen Biafra coming. And I told them, I will be the last person that will fight this fight. Our generation to come, we will hand them over the freedom. We can never allow our children to inherit this fight. Never. I have come here to finish it. If you have not seen the, the handwriting of the, on the wall, it means you are blind. All the things you have done, all the assassination attempt, all the plan, evil plan against the struggle, against the liberation of Biafra, against Samonekpa, all of them has failed, even before you start planning them. 
If you have not seen the hard rhythm of the war on the wall, it means you are a big fool. When we started, you were laughing at me. You called me that thing in Finland. And I was laughing at you, morons. You called me the the the, the in Finland. I was laughing at you. I don't think today you are still calling me that thing in Finland, right? Because you don't even know that thing in Finland yet. That thing in Finland is still warming up. I will deal with Nigeria. I am on a revenge mission for over 3 million children that died in the hand of Nigeria. I am here for to revenge. When I finish with you people, you will see Biafra, you will never ever drink cup from the same drink water from the same cup. Because the scars I will leave on you will live forever. I have come here to finish this job to liberate my people and make sure that Nigeria do not kill them again and brag about it. It has been what is going on for the for many ages. Ojuku cried. They say not an pogrom. Elfian cried. Say if you treat them bad, the children will rise again. Everybody cried, including before we were born. Nigeria is evil and some of us who actually have been possessed by the spirit of biafra and the freedom we hate nigeria with passion everything nigeria and my happiness is that even the inventors and the enablers know how much i hate nigeria because you cannot love a terrorist state a state that kill its own people a state that kill women a state that kill children a state that kill innocent people. A state where security agencies will be killing people for no reason. That is called a terrorist state. That's why Biafra, under my leadership, will do everything. Will go to any length to protect those women. If you are a woman in Biafra land, you are lucky at this point. If you happen to find yourself in Biafra territory, under this leadership of the Biafra government, you are very, very lucky. You are very, very lucky that you were not among those who were being massacred in the street of Aba in 2017. You are very lucky that you were not part of those who were killed in 2016. You are very lucky that you are not part of those who fall in the street of Umpo. You are very, very lucky you did not you partake in those people that died in Enugu and as I'm talking to you, those dead come with no consequences. But I'm here as the consequences of those killings. Those killings have given birth to Simon Epa today. And they can never es escape what is coming. I am telling you the fact. So anything liazen in Nigeria, Biafra territory, coming to represent Tinubu, you are banned. You are personal non granta all of you especially the two idiot that was named we are in the state of war i don't know whether many of you un actually understand that because you know they are trying to hide this war they tell you there is no war oh there is nothing you want to bring a war we are already at war any place where there is air raid air bombardment is it not war any place where 30 armor tank can move in one street and then we destroyed about 30 of them is it not war any place where they are bombing and bombing and bombing and killing is it not war even in ukraine people are not dying the way they are dying in biafra land and of course people think that simon Ekba is the cause of the security i have always said it and i will always continue to say it i am not the cause of the security in biafra land the cause of this security is the light that shines in you the light that make you to not protest is the light that is bringing in security. They want to kill that light. The reason why every Nigeria is hungry, only you Biafra people are not hungry. That particular secret is what they are fighting and that is what is bringing in security. They want to kill it. The light that is shining all over you where other Nigerians are dying and are crying and protesting and you're not protesting. That is the light that is bringing in security. That light is what they want to kill. 
The reason why when you talk about Biafra, it's as if you have actually committed all manner of crimes against them is because they don't want you to be free so that that light that shines all over you will not germinate to become something that every world power will worship and respect. That is what they are fighting. They are trying to eliminate that particular light. And believe me, many, many of that light has been eliminated. Do you know how many scientists that have died without notice? Do you know how many scientists that Nigeria terrorist state have killed in Biafra land? I, am, I mean scientists without education. I mean natural scientists, scientists that can invent anything, that can invent something and the thing will fly. In Biafra land, the Nigeria government has killed them. That is the light that is bringing the security. Do you know that during after the Biafra war, they destroyed the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the university where the Biafra soldiers were manufacturing all the weapons and refining the oil. They destroyed everything because they are trying to destroy that light. But after destroying everything, still, the light is still shining even on those who did not partake in the war. Even on those who were not part of the Biafra war, who were not part of those building Obuniwe today, we are building Obuniwe. Our Obuniwe is neutralizing Nigeria terrorist state. That is the light they are fighting against. That is the light they are trying everything to eliminate. They don't want this light to shine. But God in heaven have sent many of us to come that the light may shine. And that is why I will do everything nobody else would have done. And the Biafra will come at the end of the day. I am telling you the fact. I told them in the beginning, don't do like me, you go wound. They thought I was joking. That thing, they think that nobody will do. For my people, I will do it. Even do it and put Jara on it. And at the end of the day, Biafra will come. If Nigeria state have not understood that they are in big mess, I think, I don't think they will ever understand that. By now, they know. And they know exactly what I'm talking about. You are in a very deep mess for the fact that God has raised men and women, of which I am part of those, that God has risen from Biafra land to deal with you. Be smell. You will smell me in the coming months. I have come here to warn that we don't need any liaison of Tinubu nor any Nigeria in Biafra territory. In fact, if you set it up, we'll burn it down the next day. I am telling you the fact. If it is nothing else, we are going to burn it down the next day. Try it and see. I have come to send this message to them. They can call this video, send it to them. We don't need any Nigeria liaison in Biafra territory. Biafra is at war with Nigeria, and we are not going to give it even a British space to stay in our land for two minutes. For two minutes except we're not away. So if you are taking this office in the name of coming to represent Nigeria in Biafra territory, we have not signed any uh, alliance with Nigeria. We, are, we have not negotiated an alliance. So you don't have no right to come forcefully and set up a liaison office in our land. We have not, uh, you know, we don't have any peace pack at this point. So that particular office is completely banned. And please, be our friends, be on the watch. Anywhere you see anything like Zen office, please do not hesitate to inform us. We will visit that place the next minute. Thank you very much. I will be here to take questions. Thank you. Thank you. The Obato view of the Biafran people, the savior, the light of the day. We salute Biafran people. My minister, Bum Bum Bum, I salute you there. And all Biafran that have keyed in. I salute you for staying awake to this moment as emergency as it is. We are at war and it is not time to sleep. It is time to be on the watch, just like we have our gallant Biafran Defense Forces on the watch 247. So the mic is open to anyone that has pertinent questions to ask the Prime Minister on the topic and also on the awareness and achievement of the BRGIE. So the floor is open, so please reach out to the mic and um, we give you the mic and you go straight to the point. Thank you, thank you, my 
senior minister. Greetings to my prime minister. Thank you so much, sir. Your friends are so blessed to have you to such a time as this that uh, we desperately needed a savior. And there you are, in my with so much hope we have given back to Bia France, and not only the hope of hoping for tomorrow, but the hope of seeing the evidence that salvation is there just around them. Thank you so much, our Prime Minister. And Nigeria have met their match, and this is the end of the story for them. And Biafra, we are happy. So please, not just like my minister has said, raise your hands and then we'll bring you in. Pastor, how do you do it? Are you going to be bringing them in and I'll remove those that speak? Yeah, you bring them in, I, I bring them down after they speak. Okay, my boss, thank you so much, sir. All right, uh, here we are with the first um, person, please. As uh, you see, this is not a time to talk long story, brethren. Just come in with your question for the Prime Minister. You can see whatever brought the Prime Minister out at this hour of the night. It is something very important. Please make sure your question is very important. No time for frivolities, no time for accolades. Ask your question. If you don't have all right, wonderful people, welcome back to this wonderful channel where we'll bring you back to back update and information as it is hot. In case you have not joined our social media handle, what are you waiting for? Kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share, and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop, it will be the first. We'll collect them. Let's go down to the news proper as it is hot. You don't share uh, keep keep where they look for our table now. We say everywhere don't scatter as um, soldiers deployed in Kaduna as hoodlums overpower security operatives. <laughs> uh, the NIG government and the Kaduna state government have deployed soldiers because protesters have over overpowered security operatives as it stands now. Uh, there has been a lot of looting in the northern part of Nigeria. Uh, they are lifting the Russian flag, calling on President Vladimir Putin uh, to come and save the country called Nigeria. Meanwhile, let's go down to the full detail of the information. Of course, you can see that the prophecy of Onyendu uh, Mazenna, the kind of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, is very articulate and is actually coming to pass. There was a heavy fight between Miss Grant in Tudumwada Kaduna and the security operatives on Monday as the youth continued to emerge in large number, destroying properties and looting shops. It was the intervention of the military that restored sanity in the area. Before the military arrived, hundreds of miscreants hauled stones and other objects at commercial bank near the polytechnic, vandalized staff cars and stole valuables. Activities came to an abrupt end in the area as customers and other workers were seen running away for their lives in Tudumwada, which was tensed before the curfew was imposed and soldiers deployed to the area. The police had earlier warned that anyone found vandalizing or looting shops would not be considered as a protester but criminal. The police had reportedly arrested several persons who were supplying the protesters with Russian flag and other offensive items used during the protests. All right, this is happening right now in Kaduna, and somebody might be asking, uh, what is the situation in the southeastern part of Nigeria? It will interest you to know that in the five or six southeastern states, in Abia State, Anambra State, Imo State, Ebony State, Enugu State, and part of the south-south uh, have not protested. Even in Delta State, there is no protest going on around some of these, these places. And what is it telling Nigerian government? It is telling Nigerian government that the Ndibo are no more interested in whatever that concerns Nigeria. What uh, Ndibo wants is that let the nation called Biafra come let them have their freedom and let them go. If you watch, you find out that the protests which started on the 1st of August have not taken place in any of the southeastern part states. All the southeastern states are in peace. Business is going on each other. Business is going in Aba. Business is going in Oweri. Business is going in Ebony. Business is going in Enugu State. And all these places are calm. It is only in the northern states that there is heavy protest. Of course, you know that these people thought that 
uh, when they start all this, their ethnicism, tribalism, uh, they thought that maybe the people who are going to be affected are the Igbos. But Igbos are hard workers. Igbos are hard workers. And they have not been affected by any protest or whatsoever or by the hike of the prices of things. Because one thing about Igbo man is that the more you are pressing him, the more he is finding other ways to survive. Meanwhile, Ibo Bibo appeals to you to suspend protests, urge President Tinubu to address exorbitant cost of governance, tackle corruption, high and high cost of living. Ibo Bibo Southeast has reacted to President Tinubu's address. address which he said missed the issue at hand and dwelt more on the past when people requested something of important at present. National leader Ibobibo South is forum led by Chief Ugozia Henry Obiajolo, director of Henry Marshall Foundation, alongside with elders in council, response to the president's address. Having led the call for the president to address the nation while communicating to the journalists at a seminar in Enugu State. However, I must begin by thanking the president for finally addressing the people, albeit blatantly, which might have presented the unnecessary loss of innocent lives, including those of our security agents, Chief Hugo Zier, also thanks the Southeast and Igbos all over the nation for listening, listening to him for not joining the protest, which was stated clear that we Igbos are not hungry for food, rather hungry for more development and infrastructure in the southeast, and also the addition of the Olu state in the southeast to balance the region, which Ugozier commiserated with families of those who lost their loved ones in the protest. He said the president would have shown some empathy towards those who were injured, arrested and detained due to the overzealous and unprofessional conduct of some security operatives. This was unfortunate, unfortunately not the case. It is the responsibility of the government to identify criminal elements attempting to disrupt the protest through looting and other unlawful behaviors and to protect those genuinely exercising their democratic rights. Nigeria must embrace all tenets of democracy, including the right to protest, without selective adherence. I also appreciate Mr. President and con condemnation of the ethnic bigotry being propagated by some individuals against other ethnic groups. He said, I had hoped for more decisive action, such as the immediate arrest and prosecution of those responsible to demonstrate that such toler in intolerance will not be tolerated in today's Nigeria. Uh, this one is coming from uh, the leader of Ibobi Ibo. Uh, meanwhile, Asana Ato Alo Malo Mala, uh, Manato Alo Feko Megine, Ofelisi Fenyanofia. Uh, I think that from what has happened to Ndibo in this nation, uh, if Ndibo has not been able to uh, learn their lesson, uh, I think um, that will be another game for them. But as it is, looking at what is happening in today's Nigeria, uh, the, the protests and everything, it will tell you that Ndibo, Ndibo have learned their lesson and they have decided that uh, whatever other tribes want to do in this nation, let them do. But what the Igbos are seeking is to, is to have their freedom and also to have a better place for them as a people and as a government. Meanwhile, as it be, uh, information reaching to my table again is that APC World Chairman was beaten beyond recognition while preaching Tinubu's achievement. <laughs> oh, certainly. Uh, APC World Chairman beaten beyond recognition in Kebi State while preaching Tinubu's achievement. In a shocking incident in Kebi State, an unnamed APC World Chairman was brutally beaten by protesters while attempting to convoy to convey the achievement of President Bola Tinubu, the chairman who was advocating for Tinubu admits rising protests against the president's administration was left beaten beyond repair. The attack occurred as the chairman was addressing a crowd of protesters who were expressing their discontent with that, with what they describe as President Tinubu's poor governance. 
eyewitnesses reported that the situation quickly escalated, resulting in the chairman being mercilessly beaten by the agitated crowd. The incident has sparked a, fl a flurry of reaction on social media. Nigeria took to various platforms to express their views on the attack. My people, I don't see actually the happen for that side. Uh, people they protest say that the hungry chairman APC ward for KB State go they tell them say uh, may they pay attention. Say Tinubu don't achieve this, Tinubu don't achieve that. <laughs> now the people beat and waiting no good. Uh, I go see that picture for your screen there. Uh, make you see waiting they don't beat the man. The man I serve. Uh, if your wife see him or in children, if you don't born children, they feel say no no say that their papa be that they feel pass by him. <laughs> no go they no go they preach to hungry masses as it is. Uh, this government uh, is more or so one of the uh, best governments so far, and that is a sarcastic statement. Uh, that is, I'm just putting it that way uh, because immediately they entered office, they remove fuel subsidy. Uh, the next thing, the hike in prices of fuel, the hike in prices of food commodities, and the rest of them. So why should this man not be beaten beyond repair when the nation are hungry and he's trying to preach them that APC is this and that? Meanwhile, this is where I'll be winding down the curtain. And if this is your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share, and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drops, you'll be the first to collect them. Thank you for listening. God bless you.